look at this example. This time we're supposed to find the admittance of the resistor, admittance of the inductor, and admittance of the capacitor. So this is nothing else than the conductance, inductive susceptance, and capacitive susceptance. So what we're supposed to do first, we're supposed to find YR, admittance of the resistor. YR, we can say this is equal G, conductance. So this is 1 over R. So this is equal to 1 divided by 2 kilo ohms, and this is equal 500 microsiemens. Next, we're supposed to find the admittance of the inductor, which is nothing else than BL. This is equal to 1 over X of L. But please notice that X of L is not given. We have given L. That's why I'm going to write this formula as 1 over X of L is equal what? 2 pi F L. So this is equal 1 divided by open parenthesis 2 pi times F 15 kilohertz times L which is equal 15 millihenries. This is equal 707.35 microsiemens and of course angle of negative 90 degrees because we're supposed to write J over here. Okay. Next we're supposed to find the admittance of the capacitor. So I have, this is nothing else, just the capacitive susceptance, and this is 1 over x of c. But please notice that x of c is not given. So instead of x of c, I'm going to write 1 over 1 over 2 pi fc, which is nothing else, just 2 pi fc. This is equal this. So I have 2 pi times the frequency 15 kilohertz times c, which is equal 4 nanofarads. Everything is equal 377 microsiemens, an angle of 90 degrees. Next, we can find the total admittance. Total admittance is equal to the sum of all these three admittances. So if y total is equal yr plus yl plus yc. So I have yr 500 microsiemens plus yl, which is equal 707.35 microsiemens, an angle of negative 90 degrees, plus 377 microsiemens, an angle of 90 degrees. Don't forget that any time we talk about the the capacitive reactance, we're supposed to add J to the denominator, okay? That's why we are going to have angle of 90 degrees. So this is equal 599.27 microsiemens, an angle of negative 33.25 point 45 degrees. This is the total admittance of my circuit. Next, I can say, I can find Z total. Z total is equal 1 over Y total. So if 1 divided by 
0.27 microsiemens and angle of negative 33.45 degrees. This is equal 1.66 kilohms and angle of 33.45 degrees. So this is the total impedance of my circuit. Now we are going to find the currents which go through each component. But this time we are going to practice the current division law. So, in order to use the current division law, we are supposed to make sure that we are going to find the angle for the given current. How are we supposed to do that? Simply use Ohm's law. I total is equal voltage source over Z total. Someone is going to say, but voltage source is not given yet. So what I'm going to do right now, because I'm not looking right now for voltage source, I'm just looking for current, I always try to make the problem a little bit simpler by making sure that voltage source is going to have always angle zero degrees. I know that the Z total has angle of 33.45 degrees and this is equal 16 milliamps because 16 milliamps is given and any time you divide two polar forms by themselves you're supposed to divide the magnitudes and subtract the angles that's why my angle is going to be negative 33.45 degrees because 0 minus 33.45 is equal negative 33.45 degrees so this is my total current now we are ready to find the current which goes through each component as we said before we want to use the current division law so let me write the general formula for current division law Ix is equal I total times Yx over Y total. So if I want to find current which goes through the resistor, I'm supposed to simply multiply I total by Yr over Y total. Where I total we found is equal 16 milliamps an angle of negative 33.45 degrees times YR 500 microsiemens over Y total which is equal 599.27 microsiemens an angle of negative 33.45 degrees. Everything is equal 13.35 milliamps and angle of 0 degrees. So this is the current which goes through the resistor in my parallel RLC circuit. Now we can find the current which goes through the inductor. So we have IL is equal I total times YL over Y total. Where I total is equal 16 milliamps an angle of negative 33.45 degrees times YL which is equal 707.35 microsiemens an angle of negative 90 degrees over Y total which is equal 
0.27 micro Siemens and angle of negative 33.45 degrees. Everything is equal 18.88 milliamps and angle of negative 90 degrees. So this is the current which goes through the inductor. Next, we're supposed to find the current which goes through the capacitor. I have IC equals I total times YC over Y total. This is equal 16 milliamps an angle of negative 33.45 degrees times YC which is equal 377 micro siemens an angle of 90 degrees over Y total which is 599.27 micro siemens an angle of negative 33.45 degrees. So everything is equal 10.06 milliamps an angle of 90 degrees. Please notice that we found all three currents. Next we're supposed to verify if our answers are correct. We're going to use KCL Kirchhoff current law in order to verify our calculations. So if I total is equal IR plus IL plus IC, where IR we found is equal 13.35 milliamps plus IL we found is equal 18.88 milliamps an angle of negative 90 degrees plus 10.06 milliamps an angle of 90 degrees. Of course you're supposed to use the calculator and the value which I obtain is 16 milliamps an angle of negative 33.45 degrees. So please notice that this is the same value which we had at the beginning, right? So it means that our calculations up to this moment are correct. Next, we're supposed to find a voltage source. Voltage source, I'm going to find from Ohm's law. I'm going to simply mu multiply I total times Z total. Please notice that I always try to make the voltage source with angle of zero degrees. Okay, I want to keep voltage source with angle of zero degrees because it's, in my personal opinion, it's easier to perform the analysis. So I have I total equals 16 milliamps times Z total, which is equal 1.66 kilohms. So voltage source is equal 26.56 volts. So this is the value of my voltage, right? Across each component. And you're supposed to realize that this voltage is equal to voltage across the resistor, this is also equal to voltage across the inductor, and this is also equal voltage across the capacitor because this is the parallel circuit. In parallel circuit every voltage is the same, I mean voltage across each component is the same. So next we're supposed to find the true power. Because this problem is giving me just current, right? And this is not expressed in terms of, uh, in terms of the sinusoidal equation and it's not specified that this is peak, so I assume that this is RMS 
current. So the voltage which I found is also RMS. So if it comes to finding the power, so I'm going to simply write that power is equal voltage source raised to second power over the resistance. Why I don't use one half? Because we say that this is RMS value. When you have RMS values, you don't supposed to write one half in the formula for power. So we have 26.56 volts raised to the second power over resistance, which is equal to 2 kilohms. Everything is equal to 352.7 milliwatts. So this is the true power in my parallel circuit. Now we can find the reactive power at the capacitor. Okay, in order to do so, I'm going to use the formula which says that uh, QC is equal voltage source square times YC admittance right, of my capacitor. Okay, why I'm using this formula? Because we didn't find the capacitive reactance. So instead of capacitive reactance, I'm going to use the admittance of the capacitor, right? So I'm going to have voltage source equals 26.56 volts raised to the second power times YC, which is equal 377 micro siemens okay we don't include the angles is equal yc 265.94 millivolt ampere reactive so this is my The reactive power at the capacitor. Next, I can find the reactive power at the inductor. So I have QL is equal nothing else just voltage source raised to the second power times YL, where voltage source is equal 26. 56 volts raised to the second power times YL and YL is equal 707.35 micro siemens so QL is equal 498.98 millivolt ampere reactive. Okay, so this is my QL. If you want to find Q total, you're supposed to simply write Q total is equal absolute value of QC minus QL. Okay, this is absolute value. Equals QC we found is equal 265.94, 265.94 millivolt amp reactive minus QL 498.98 millivolt ampere reactive. This is equal 200. 33.04 millivolt ampere reactive. Okay, so this is the total reactive power in my RLC parallel circuit. Now we are ready to find the power factor. Power factor we are going to find from the formula is equal 
cosine of angle theta. And this is the angle which is next to z total. So this is equal cosine of angle 33.45 degrees. This is equal 0 0.834 lakh. Because my angle is positive, I suppose to write lakh. Remember, this is the angle which is next to Z. Okay, when the angle next to Z is positive, you're supposed to use the word lakh. Okay, so it means that the current total current in the circuit is going to lag the voltage source by angle of 33.45 degrees. Next, we're supposed to find the series equivalent circuit. So in order to do so, I'm supposed to write down that Z total is equal 1.66 kilo ohms. This is what we found before. And 33.45 degrees and convert this polar form to the rectangular form. Okay, you're supposed to obtain 1.38 kilo ohms plus J 915 ohms. Well, this is my resistance in series circuit. Imaginary part is my inductive reactance. I have X of Ls. Okay, this is inductive reactance in my series equivalent circuit. Why? Because my angle is positive. Because a positive sign next to J is telling me that the angle is positive or positive J is automatically uh, telling me that this is the inductor. Now we can draw the series equivalent circuit. So I have a voltage source, I have resistor RS and I have inductor LS okay and we have current I total. Please notice that the total current is equal to the current which goes through the resistor and this is also equal to the current which goes through the inductor. Okay so if I want to find the true power, I'm supposed to write that true power is equal I RS, of course this is the power for the series circuit, square times RS. So I total is equal 16 milliamps raised to the second power times RS 1.38 kilo ohms is equal 353.28 milliwatts. Okay? Please keep in mind that this is the service equivalent circuit. The total current in the circuit is equal to the total current in the parallel circuit. That's why I'm using 16 milliamps for my calculations. So this is the power which I got for the series circuit. For the parallel circuit, we obtain we obtain before 352.71 milliwatts. So I, as you can see, these two values are very close to each other. So it means that our calculations are okay. Next, I'm supposed to find the reactive power. So I have QS. I know that this is already inductor, that's why I'm going to write this is QLS is equal ILS square times X of L S. This is equal 
16 milliamps raised to the second power times x of Vales, and x of Vales is equal to 915 ohms. So this is equal to 200. 34.24 millivolt ampere reactive. If we are going to compare with the total reactive power for the parallel circuit, we are going to see that Q total was equal 233.24 millivolt ampere reactive. Again, as you can see, the differences between these two numbers are very small, so it means that we are okay so far with our calculations. Next, we're supposed to find the voltage across the resistor. So I have VRS, I mean the voltage across the resistor in the series circuit, is equal I RS, right, the current in my series circuit which goes through the resistor, times resistance of my series circuit. This is equal IRS 16 milliamps and angle of negative 33.45 degrees times Rs 1.38 kilohms supposed to give you 22.08 volts and angle of negative 33.45 degrees. Okay, so this is the voltage across the resistor in my series equivalent circuit. Next, we're supposed to find the voltage across the inductor. VLS is equal ILS times X of LS, where ILS is equal 16 milliamps and angle of negative 33.45 degrees times X of LS, which is equal 915 ohms and angle of 90 degrees. Everything is equal to 14.64 volts and angle of 56.55 degrees. So this is the voltage across the inductor. So we found these two voltages and someone is going to say, okay, this is the end of the problem. No, we have to verify if our answers are correct. Again, we're supposed to use Kirchhoff voltage law for the series circuit. KVL looks like this. Voltage source is equal in this case VR plus VL. Of course, this is series circuit. So, this is equal VRS is 22.08 volts and angle of negative 33.45 degrees plus VLS 14.64 volts and angle of 56.55 degrees. This is equal 26.49 volts and angle of 0.0. .0 96 degrees. Okay, so originally we got the value of voltage source 
26.56 volts and angle of zero degrees. So as you can see, these two values are very close to each other. So we can say that we solved the problem correctly.